If you have a set of campaigns that have similar goals, you may want to consider creating a campaign group within Google Ads. Creating campaign groups will help you set performance targets to see if you need to make any adjustments down the road. In this video, we'll explain further of what a campaign group is and what it can do, and then we'll show you which campaign types are allowed to use campaign groups, as well as some rules you need to be aware of before you start. For this demo, I have to use an actual client account because I want to use an account that has actual performance metrics that we can use to show for the performance targets. So I apologize that many things are going to have to be blurred out, but the process will still be the same. Now, if you are new to campaign groups and Google ads could be hidden in the view that you're looking at right now, I'm in the campaigns view. So within the left hand navigation, I'm going to click on show more and it's still not visible. So I have to scroll all the way down and it's at the very bottom. We see campaign groups. I am setting this up for the first time within this account. So pretty straightforward. We need to add another campaign group. First thing we can do is head on up to name the campaign group. So for this particular client, they have several search campaigns that focus on different areas. Some are more higher level awareness. Some are for specific products. They have brand campaigns. They have some competitor and conquesting campaigns, but their main core of search campaigns that they are running are for the industries that they serve. That's a huge part of their website and the vast majority of what we're going after with Google ads. There we see I changed the name because it makes sense for me and the client to want to monitor the performance of these campaigns. It's where we see the best lifetime value. It is B2B. It also makes up the largest percentage of their business and performance for these types of campaigns are different than the other ones that we are running. So it makes sense to group them together so we can review this performance. So after you're done naming your campaign, then you would head down to start selecting the campaigns you want to include within this group. Again, I'm only showing you one example, but when you're creating a campaign group, you can use any combination of search, display, video, which is your YouTube ads, or shopping campaigns. This is another scenario where you have to do what's best for your account and your business. I know some people think it might be weird when you're trying to look at performance targets later on to add a display or video with a search or shopping. However, one thing that easily comes to mind is a holiday event. If you're running a Mother's Day campaign, quite possibly you are doing it with a variety of different campaign types. So if you want to see how that initiative is doing, it's okay to lump those within the same campaign. The one potential issue that could come up is that a campaign can only be included in one campaign group at a time. You cannot add the same campaign to multiple campaign groups. So you see there's a search functionality here. You can just type in whatever naming conventions if you've already grouped that within your account structure. Since this account isn't huge, I can go and just manually select the campaigns that I want. So let me select them really quick and then we could jump ahead. Okay, Here I've selected the six industry campaigns that I want to group together. Then we could head down to our performance targets. Now using the six campaigns that I have selected, Google is recommending that we choose target that's focused on conversions. But that's not the only option. If I look at choosing a different metric, scrolling down a little bit again, you can choose how you want to measure performance. We will stick with conversions. So some of the other options are looking at clicks. If you are in the e-commerce space or at least have some value associated with your conversions, you can choose conversion value. And then depending on the campaign type, you can look at unique users. I selected that on purpose just to show you that it's only reported for display and video campaigns. If you are combining display and video with search and shopping, it's not going to be the ideal metric. Once again, using that Mother's Day example I was talking about. But our goal here, like I said, is conversions. Then you can look at what time frame you're using to measure the performance. The default option was monthly. Depending on the volume that your account gets, you may want to choose a different option. Higher spend, higher volume accounts may be able to get decent performance targets from a weekly option. Or you can choose monthly, quarterly, or if it's a limited campaign run, like the holiday example we were talking about again, you can choose a custom date range. If you choose the custom date range, you'd select the start date, the end date, and choose if you want to have it repeating. I believe I said that the default option was showing monthly, but for this particular client, it's a pretty niche industry, not a ton of search volume. It's a longer sales cycle, and if they do close a deal, it's a higher ticket item. So it's not like we're getting e-commerce sales every single day. So because of that, we do like to look at things from a quarterly view. And then we have to choose at least one performance target. Of course, conversions are important to them. For the six campaigns that I have added to this campaign group, the total number in March, which was the previous month from when I'm recording this video, was 19. If we round it up to 20, 
times three for the quarter, that's 60. I don't want to match my performance targets. I want to increase it. So I'm gonna choose the option of greater than or equal to, and let's select 70. Again, we don't get a ton of conversions from this account. So I'm not gonna push it and try to double it the next quarter. It's just not gonna happen. But you saw that the other option was between. If you wanna to try to hit in between a certain range of conversions. Now that was just one performance target. We can add additional performance targets. This time, I'll look at CPA. Here's the average in March was 235. I'm not gonna to be too greedy just for the sake of this video. Let's just knock it down to 200. There was the other option for spend, but in this case, our spend is capped for Google Ads, so I'm good with this one. I'm gonna click Done, recapping my performance targets options here, and then I'm going to create the campaign group. After I was finished saving the campaign group, they took me back to the main overview screen. But if you look at this section here in the top navigation, you can see I'm filtered by this particular campaign group. Everything that they're showing me within this overview only includes the information from the six campaigns I've added to the campaign group. If you wanna head back to your all view screen, just click on all campaigns, that's how you will get there. Or in this case, I'm gonna click on campaign groups. Here we see some basic column information related to the campaign group. You can change the date range to be whatever you want. I'm going up here, you could segment the information just like you could from the main campaign view. And then if you choose to update any columns, the options are limited, but you see we get performance, conversions, and call details. So not as robust. I can head back on over to the left-hand navigation, scroll down, and this time I wanna go over performance targets. And here we get a view of how the campaign is currently performing. Now we're looking at this at a quarterly basis. And at the time of I'm recording this video, we are only five days in from the second quarter of the year. So now we get a chance to recap of the date range of our performance targets, how we're trying to reach the goal for this campaign group. We're looking at it at a quarterly basis. We're measuring on conversions and our target is to have at least 70 conversions. Right now, we only have one. When we were creating the performance targets for this campaign group, I didn't select spend as a performance target. So it's not showing me anything here, but it's still showing me what my actual spend is so far for this quarter for these six campaigns. And then looking at our target CPA, I was hoping to get $200 or less. And within five days, really looking at not even four and a half days, our actual target CPA is $87. Let's hope I can keep this pace up for the next quarter. This snapshot view could be helpful to see if you're on target to reach your goals, all depending on what you've chosen for the frequency of how you're wanting to review the campaign group goals. Again, for this instance, way too early to tell, only being a couple days out of the month and the first two days being on a weekend, so nothing was really running. However, I have to use the data that's given. So right now in this extremely early snapshot, we're definitely going to be under the target goal of 70 conversions for the quarter. However, our conversion rates are really good. So this is when I can potentially go back and see what are ways that I can optimize these campaigns to either give it more budget, which would be the easiest one, or are there things that I can do to increase impression share or get more clicks that we get more traffic to the site to actually convert these users. For whatever reason, if you need to edit anything within the campaign group, you just click on it. And then I wanna click on the blue pencil edit button. And here's where I can update my performance targets. Right now I have it as quarterly. If I wanna change that, I'll have to click on the choose a different metric to target. I can still leave it as conversions, but I can change the time frame if I need to. I'm gonna cancel out of here, go back up to campaign groups. Let's say for whatever reason, I need to remove a campaign from the mix. I can click on the check button, go to edit, and edit the campaign group. There's the option to remove it. Definitely don't wanna do it in this account. And then we're kinda of back to where we were. For whatever reason, if I choose to remove any of the campaigns, I'm not gonna do just in case you need to do it. Removing a campaign will remove all of its performance data from your performance target section. Yes, it seems like an obvious thing, but I need to clarify it's not gonna save any historical reports that you had within your performance target section. Everything is gonna be real time based upon the campaigns that you've included within the campaign group. There we see, there's another way that we can update our performance targets. I didn't make any changes, so I'm just gonna cancel. Your campaign group section, of course, is gonna be the place where you need to go to create another campaign group. And while I have the campaign names blurred out, you can see in the type and daily budget columns that certain ones are grayed out. That's because these are the campaigns I have in the first campaign group that I created, making it pretty clear cut that you can only use a campaign in one campaign group at a time. That's why we like to have very distinct and very specific groupings when we're using these with specific clients. I can't think of any immediate need to lump 
all your search campaigns into one, all your display campaigns into one, because we can filter those already at any point within your navigation. So that's why we like to do product groupings, specific events, different service categories, similar service categories, maybe all of your brand campaigns, maybe all of your non-brand campaigns. Again, it's going to be completely different depending on what's important for you to review and project within your accounts. Going down and canceling out of this again, I do want to head over to the performance target section. And I realized that I forgot to mention one thing and I do want to cover it. And that's going to be the status column. Currently ours is active. It's just created. Date of today is within this current date range that we set for the time frame for this specific campaign group. So while it's active, that means data is actively being collected. And this is the time to see if we're on track to meet our goals. Going back to the Mother's Day example that I had, that is a time of the year in the United States that hasn't happened yet. So you can proactively create a campaign group if you're proactively creating your campaigns for this specific time of year and set the performance target for a future date. So before anything goes live, if you are being proactive, that status will be scheduled. And then in this case, if we come back in July to see if we've met our goals for the quarter for this particular campaign group, the status will be passed. So you will be able to look at historical performance. And that's how simple it is to create a campaign group and set your performance targets so you can come back frequently and see if you're meeting the goals of your campaign group within whatever time frame you have chosen. The needs and goals of every account are going to be different. Even within the same account, the goals for certain campaigns are going to be different than the others. This could be a helpful way for you to group those particular campaign goals together so it's a lot easier to review performance, assess what needs to be fixed, and to review if you're on pace to meet those goals. Better yet, hopefully you're exceeding them. If you have any questions on how Google Ads campaign groups work or performance targets, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.